Well, I appreciate so much getting to be here with you all uh, this morning. You know, as it happens, uh, I have been listening to some of the previous speakers, and I found myself agreeing with so much of everything that they said. And that is a testimony to the fact that a lot of these issues are known. And some of them, they're even Democrats. They were doing some great work there. And, and I, I really appreciated it. So I hope you'll grant me diplomatic immunities. I'm going to put aside my own notes here because of, again, some of the, not redundancy, but uh, some of the stuff that you've heard. And just point out that a lot of us know about the religious freedom uh, abrogation in the world. We understand that there are a lot of people suffering under it. In fact, uh, I think we are called of God. Now, this is my own faith perspective, but we're called of God. According to Proverbs, uh, starting chapter 11, it says, Deliver those who are drawn toward death, and hold those back who are stumbling to the slaughter. If you say, surely we do not know this, does not he who weigh the heart consider it? He who weighs your soul and keeps your soul, does he not know it? And will he not render to each man according to his works? So if you grant me diplomatic immunity here just for a moment. I am concerned that while we understand this issue, sometimes we do not find the courage to do what's necessary to prevent some of the terrible abuses that are occurring across the world. Uh, we wrote a letter out of my office uh, when ISIS first entered Iraq and said how dangerous that they were and what their, their record was. And we were essentially ignored, and, and they, were con they were called the, the JV team. And someone stood on the golf club, uh, the golf course, and refused to come forward and do what was necessary to respond to this. And I've got to tell you, folks, if we are going to prevent some of the human rights abuses in this country, we're going to have to have the courage to see that the strong are willing to stand between the malevolent and the innocent. If we don't do that, this will continue. ISIS has no fear of America at this point. Some of their leaders get hit once in a while by a drone, but they know that there's no full-scale effort to stop them from doing what they are there doing. So they're raping and beheading and crucifying their way across Iraq, and it is a disgrace that I don't have the words to articulate. It is going to be important that we as a people stand up and say, we are the leaders in this country. We're the leaders of the free world. We're the unipolar superpower of this planet. And we will not stand by while our brothers and sisters are slaughtered because of their faith. Because if we don't have that, I'm not sure what else we have. We're a, we're a country predicated on the notion that we hold certain truths to be self-evident, that we are all created. And that means that these people are our brothers and sisters, even if they don't hold our faith perspective. And true faith, true Tolerance is not pretending we have no differences. It's being kind and committed to each other in spite of those differences. And I will suggest to you that right now, evil is advancing across the globe, and we are standing as, as, as bystanders and not doing what's necessary. And I will just, just go ahead and say it, and I beg your forgiveness if it sounds political. But I am convinced that this administration will go down in its history as having a weak and disgraceful response to ISIS, the way that they've slaughtered the innocent across the world. And I will also say something else while I'm walking by this way. You know, it's the water on the inside of the ship that sinks it. And right now, if we don't defend our religious freedom here at home, we will not be able to project religious freedom abroad. If we elect Mrs. Clinton this fall, religious freedom and essentially the Constitution as a whole will be at grave risk because of the people that she would put on the Supreme Court. So I'm just being direct with you. I probably won't get invited back, but uh, I want you to know that I, I deeply hold all of you in the greatest respect, even some of the folks that I've been beating up here just now. I wish them nothing but the best God can give them. But if a, as a people we say we care about delivering the innocent, then we are going to have to do, stand up and do what's necessary and what we can because nobody else on the earth can do it. I know people say, well, America's not the world's policeman. Well, who is? If we don't do it, who will? And again, you wouldn't know it to look at me, but I teach one and two-year-olds for Sunday, in Sunday school. So uh, I wish you all the very best. God help us to stand up and do what's necessary. We know in the world we're going to have tribulation, but we can be of good cheer for he's overcome the world. And it's our job now to charge the gates because they, the gates of hell are not going to prevail uh, under that charge. Thank you all very much.